This is one of the few channels that focuses on both adventure motorcycles and Harley Davidson since I happen to own one of each. And one comment I keep getting ever since the introduction of the Pan America is, when is the Pan America 975 coming out? Now, seeing as the new Sportster Nightster 975 was just introduced with a 975cc version of the Revolution Max engine, this is a reasonable question. The Sportster is now available in the 1250cc and 975cc displacements, and the current Pan Am runs the 1250cc motor. So is a 975 next? We have a leak on the Harley website indicating that this may be the case. Let's look at the details and speculate on the characteristics of such a bike. And as always, if you find this content valuable, please help out the channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. One way to predict upcoming Harleys is to check motorcycle model codes on accessories. For example, before the Harley Nightster came out, the model code RH975 appeared on several accessories on the website. The RH1250S code refers to the Sportster S, so it became clear that the motorcycle that Harley was about to introduce was a smaller Sportster with a 975cc displacement. Well, recently, two more model codes appeared on the accessory list that raised some eyebrows. These were the RA975 and RA965S. What's the RA designation? Well, the Pan America model code is RA1250 and the Pan America Special is dubbed the RA1250S. So you can see why adventure riders took notice. So, are we getting a middleweight Pan America? As much as a 975cc bike can be called a middleweight? Probably. It's not that much of a surprise considering Harley has the engine already. The trend is turning away from big heavy ADV bikes to lighter, more dirt worthy machines and I'm sure that Harley will not want to miss out on that cash cow. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if all those accidental leaks are planned ahead of time to keep the media talking and create a buzz of anticipation. The only weird part of this leak is the RA965S rather than the 975. Why would Harley designate the special with a lower number? I'd guess it's a typo. So how might such a machine actually look? In the engine department, expect a more aggressive tune than the Nightster which is listed at 90 horsepower, a pretty respectable figure for a cruiser. An adventure bike that is going to compete with the KTM 890 Adventure and the Ducati Desert X will need more. Though perhaps not as much as the cancelled Bronx 975 Street Fighter which had a claimed 115 horsepower. As for weight, this is where Harley may have a problem. The Big Pan America weighs a competitive 535 pounds, but middleweight bikes have to be lighter. If the designers at Harley are just going to stick a smaller engine in the same frame, the bike will be well over 500 pounds, much heavier than the KTM and Triumph competitors. A lighter machine will require a redesign to lighten the frame, and that's where Harley runs into the V-twin problem. There's a reason why KTM, Honda, Yamaha, Aprilia and BMW design their bikes around parallel twins rather than V-twins. Parallel twins are lighter because the cylinders share a cylinder wall and head, and they are far more compact because they can be shoved forward, thus allowing for a more compact bike with a longer swing arm. V-twins with their increased length and complexity add weight and size all around. But the Pan America 975 will have a V-twin because it's a Harley and that's what Harley has available. Unless they secretly designed a parallel twin at some point, unlikely. So is a V-twin Pan America 975 doomed to be relegated to inferior status among the middleweight crowd? Maybe not. Ducati is another manufacturer wedded to a V-twin and their new Desert X uses their 937cc motor and makes it work in an adventure bike. It must be noted that that bike weighs almost 500 pounds though, and it ain't cheap. So if Harley can pump that motor up over 100 horsepower and somehow keep the weight sub 500 pounds, the new Pan America may be competitive. Personally, I hope they oriented more toward off-roading with a 21-inch front wheel, maybe an 18-inch rear, and decent suspension travel. It would be a shame if they simply built a scaled-down, cheaper sport tourer instead of a proper adventure bike. I'm sure it will also have all the rider modes, traction control and other toys. And I'm hoping it will be significantly less expensive than the Desert X's 16.8 thousand American or 19.3 Canadian. The Big Pan America is priced competitively so hopefully this one will be as well. 
If it's close to the Ducati and not as nice a motorcycle, it will get crushed. And of course, there's no word yet on when it's coming out. Could be later this year or next, who knows. Personally, I'm sticking with my Yamaha Tenere 700, the perfect bike for me. But I wish Harley luck in this endeavor. What do you think of this development? Would you go for a smaller and hopefully lighter Pan America? Please share your thoughts in the comments and ride safe. If you're interested in any of the gear that Brooke and I wear or use, or the camera equipment we use to film this channel, the links are below. Everything listed there was bought with our own money and we are not sponsored by any company. However, the links below are affiliate links and the channel is paid a small amount for referring you to shop at no additional cost to you. We do not recommend any products that we are not satisfied with ourselves, but we do strongly urge you to do your research and select the correct size for items like helmets and clothing. As always, thanks for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And whatever you ride, enjoy it. Wave at other bikers no matter what they're riding, we're all part of a brotherhood and sisterhood. Keep the rubber side down, shiny side up, and may the spokes be with you.